what's going on guys welcome to the channel i'm ben today i'm out in the snow testing out the x24 back here if you guys are in search of a folding e-bike that still performs ridiculously well on and off road stick around i think you're gonna like what you see So I probably say this every time I get a new one of these bikes, but this has got to be one of the coolest ones that I've seen. Maybe a little bit awkward, but we'll check out exactly why that is. So this frame actually will split in half. That's basically why we've got this big section here. You actually can get a second battery for this, and that would go in this compartment. Then you've got the little charge port on here. Uh, mine does not have a battery in it. The only battery uh, that I've got is actually the seat post. So this is sort of your main one then, which I think makes sense. Having all that weight up here would definitely not be good for handling. So having it sort of centralized and down low is definitely a good thing. Uh, I had noticed though that this does hang down quite a bit, but honestly, you shouldn't be running over anything that would be hitting your chain ring anyways. So if anything, that might add a little bit of protection. And up above that, we've got an HLT 100 rated for 750 pounds. And if we look further around the back, we've got a another set of struts in the rear here. So these are just a coil over. I'm guessing that there is something inside of here. I'm not exactly sure what it's doing. But if we take that cap off, you can see this is a Schrader valve. So this is the same type of valve that you would use to put air into the big 24 by 4 inch Chaoyang knobby tires, which I've got to say definitely seem like they're going to hold up pretty well for the trails that I've got planned for this thing. But honestly, this whole suspension setup has me a bit baffled. I guess we'll see how it handles. Around back here, we've got a nice, uh, I guess, passenger seat, and I'm not sure if you're supposed to stick pegs on the rear here or... The seat is definitely nice and comfy. I really do kind of like this one. It's probably one of my favorites so far. As far as comfort goes up front, we've got some nice full leather grips and a thumb throttle on the left side side. Shimano 8-speed shifter on the right. Unbranded hydraulic brakes that feel pretty decent. Down at the other end, we've got, again, unbranded calipers on 180 millimeter drilled rotors. Shimano Altus derailleur on the back with our 8-speed cassette. 1,000 watt unbranded motor. Up front, we've got dual crown forks with adjustable preload and compression damping. And they have these little stops on here that are supposed to be oriented in a way that doesn't allow you to turn the bars any further, but honestly, I don't see any reason why they can't just be set like that. Still get a little bit of protection there for the frame, and we're able to turn the bars, I mean, more than you probably ever need to, to be honest. Cables all seem to be managed pretty nicely. I don't really see any issues there, and I think... Might as well just turn this thing on and check out the rest of it. So if we hit the power button here, our display should come on. And this really is a very, very nice looking display. So we've got a couple different options. I'm going to leave this on wattage output down there. We've got our speed, miles per hour. If we hit the little I button here and hold it, it'll put it in sport mode. Do it again. Be down to eco. And then also normal. We've got five different pedal assist settings. And if I hit that I button a few more times, it'll just click through and show us all the different things that it logs. The control pad does have a standalone headlight button. However, if I hit it, it seems like the light turns on and then immediately back off. And that's, I believe, because this actually has a sensor in it. So it will basically turn on for you like automatic car lights would. And it looks like around back, we've actually got a brake light here and here. So that's really kind of a nice option. This also will light up if I hit that 
light button until it senses that there's too much light and shuts down to save power. And right below the thumb throttle here, we've got our horn. So you actually can't turn it off, it just turns itself back on. Hmm. Ah, whatever, I guess if you're out at night, you should have your lights on. Anyways, for safety, even just for other drivers to see you, definitely not the brightest light, but obviously enough probably to get you home. All right, let's see how I fit on this thing. So the seat is all the way down as low as it'll go. I have a 31 inch inseam. I am about 160 pounds and I'm about 5'10". So obviously if I'm all the way back on the seat, I'm basically just kind of getting the tiptoes to the ground here. Uh, if I want to put one foot up on the pedal, I can pretty easily kind of slide off the side and get one foot flat footed. Reach to the bars with the seat kind of pushed forward is comfortable. Uh, certainly wouldn't want them any farther away, I don't think. Uh, seems like my pedal stroke should be pretty good here. I think I could easily put some power down. Obviously, it could raise the seat up quite a bit. It goes a lot higher. Let's see if we can figure out what that suspension does. Oh! Still good. So I really like that the front of this bike is so light because all the components are basically in the back, or at least I like it so far. Uh, it makes moving the front end or picking the front end up much easier um, as far as folding it goes. Whoa. Oh, that is pretty compact for as big of a bike as this thing is. So there we go frame needs to be able to give it a little bit of a foot to stand on when it's all folded up. That is pretty darn cool. Handlebars are obviously still pretty big and we don't have foldable foot pedals or anything so at least that one I guess is going to stick out a little bit but honestly I don't think it'd really be worth it. I personally don't really like the folding pedals and I'm thinking that this thing might actually still perform off-road pretty good. And the reason I say it like that is because the last folding bike that I tested really did not belong off-road. This one I'm really interested to see what it's going to do. So this is going to be a 48 volt. We've got a 19.2 amp hour battery. Again, 1000 watt motor. Supposedly can be recharged 500 times. It is a brushless gear motor. Supposedly puts out 70 newton meters. Max load is supposed to be 330.6 pounds. Vehicle weight is 83.7, which I believe that feels just about right. It is a little bit heavier. Max speed of 31. What about with no load at all? 30 in normal mode. What if we bump that up to sport mode? 37. question is, after I'm done riding, I'm not going to be able to get it back in there. Let's see what this thing can do. I forgot this though. Oh no. <sighs> well, there goes my last selfie stick. Well, away she goes I suppose. Alright, let's see how this thing performs out on the road. So we'll do a zero to top speed. I'm going to start off on first gear, power assist level five, and we will bump this up to sport mode. I'll use the throttle and the pedals and we'll just see what we can get out of this. Ready? Go! Twenty nine, up thirty, thirty one. That yeah, looks like that's about it. So top speed of thirty one feels pretty good at that speed. I have noticed if I put my weight over the front a little bit and give the bars a wiggle. I don't know if it's changing the center of gravity or just where the weight is distributed, but it it can kind of get a little. I don't know, not dangerous, just a little weird I guess uh, but other than that when I'm sitting on the seat I mean it just feels like any other bike that you'd pedal down the road or any other e-bike uh, any other good smooth e-bike really I mean this is 
I don't know, it, it seems quieter for some reason. Just kind of in general, I, I don't know, I guess the whole thing has just kind of, I don't know, a slightly elevated build quality compared to the other things I've tested out. Let's get back up to speed here, find a dry patch of pavement if we can, and we'll test the brakes out. Keeping in mind that it is, again, pretty cold out, so tires are cold, ground is cold, hot, sticky summer day. This would be probably a bit better, but let's see what we can do here. Whoa, yeah, okay. Uh, the brakes were good. <laughs> Too good for conditions, that's for sure. Yikes, those are nice. Oh yeah, I can easily, easily pick up the back end. We'll take it out of sport, put it in normal, and see what these pedal assist levels do. So one, five miles an hour. Two is eight, 11, woo, 15 and a half. I have not been pedaling. Yeah, somewhere around 26-ish. This is a, a really nice cadence, honestly. Can't say that uh, that I'd be too displeased to have to cruise at this speed for a long period of time. I can easily keep up with my legs and easily put some power down to save some battery. Real question, of course, is will it wheelie? Oh! <coughs> yeah, a bit. Get run over by the dump trucks. Woo, trail closed. Well, looks like we'll be taking an alternate route today. I don't know why that side's closed down, but we're in for an adventure now, I guess. I don't know this one that well. Well, this is gonna be interesting. I've gotta keep weight over the front, but also still try to, whoa, somehow film the bike with <laughs> just one camera on my face. First thing that I've kind of noticed here is once in a while, my foot, when I'm taking a corner, will kind of get bumped up against the, I guess I don't know if it would hit the tire. No, maybe not, just the fender. So the fender maybe sticks out a little bit further than it should. I suppose I could bend that a little bit closer. Uh, other than that though, everything feels pretty good. I do feel a little bit farther away from the bars, I think, than I would like to when I'm seated, but that's not really a bad thing. Uh, standing up, this thing actually feels really pretty darn good. Um, whoa, tires are at 10 PSI each and I'm thinking maybe I'll drop them a little bit if I notice any slippage but honestly the way they've got this trail groomed this seems to work out pretty well um, and I, I don't know that I've pedaled at all yet this is pretty much just all throttle normal mode pedal assist 5 which I guess we should see if that has any effect yeah it definitely doesn't do anything on zero. Oh yeah that whoa pedal assist Come on, pedal assist level and the throttle are definitely linked. Front feels, whoa, <laughs> super light, like I thought it would, which will be kind of fun. It'll be interesting to see if I can get this thing to jump. Ooh, this will be interesting too. Any dump trucks? No dump trucks. Oop, a little bit of pedaling required. Spin in the back a bit. We'll go slow over the mud. Okay, caked in dump juice. Look at that, all the deer and I think it must have been a raccoon or fox was enjoying the trail here too. So of course I've got to watch out for ice because I do not have any studs in the tires here. But honestly, these 24 by four wheels and tires are really, really feeling pretty good out here. I, I was kind of thinking that I would notice a, a huge difference, especially on the snow with, I guess basically the geometry of the bike, but also the the slightly smaller tires than I'm used to on a on an e-mountain bike. I think everything I've got is a 26 in the in the garage at home. But honestly, not, not too big of a deal yet anyway. No heavy equipment. It'll keep going. Seat is definitely sticky. And like I said, kind of a little too far back for my liking. I don't know how much. Oh! <laughs> you have to give that one another run, I think. Whoops. There's like all sorts of little prints on here. Look at that, it must be raccoon. Definitely the dump coons. All right, let's make her up. Oh yeah, no problem. Just need a little bit of a run. Woo, that pedal assist definitely kicks in and keeps you going. Woo, yeah, we're flying. Nope, we're not gonna do that. <laughs> so I definitely prefer bikes, especially with this type of riding, that the throttle 
and the speed or the, the power assist level setting is not linked uh, because then I can run it at a reasonable pedal assist pace when I'm pedaling, uh, but also still get all the throttle power. So not the greatest for this type of riding. Of course, I don't think that they're really targeting this type of riding with this bike, but I've got to say, I'm uh, not disappointed. It really seems like it's handling quite well. I think maybe just a, a slightly higher bar would be kind of nice, but uh, obviously if you're a little bit bigger than me, and again, I'm 5'10", 31 inch inseam, 160 pounds. Whoa, can't seem to keep on the trail. And I guess maybe that is, it could just be lack of skills or lack of paying attention, but I do seem to find myself wandering off the trail. Woo, when I don't mean to, ooh, wow. Well, this is, like I said, certainly, I don't think what they've, intended this bike for i have to get a little more air but man that felt nice and it didn't really seem like it was too hard to bunny hop this thing off of those hills uh, as far as power goes in the woods could respond a little bit quicker but of course it's not a motorcycle it's supposed to sort of emulate a bicycle with just maybe a little bit extra power a bicycle with a, a really good rider somebody that has more leg muscles ugh, and stamina than me and now we're just lost in the dump oh wait no we're not let's follow the raccoon trail <laughs> whoa okay so there was some ice yikes here's a lot of ice and you definitely especially with snow riding and i guess if, especially if you're not gonna have studs you would, uh, of course, need to, whoa, plan your ride for a day where the snow is either fresh or a bit crusty and kind of hope that there isn't a bunch of ice. Obviously, we can't really expect these tires to grip on these type of conditions that well. Woo! Yeah, I can definitely feel the weight back there when I go to try to pick the back end up. But honestly, I mean, it, it feels it feels light just kind of all over it. It feels flickable, and I think a lot of that is just because the rear kind of bottom portion of the frame is where the majority of the weight is uh brakes feel oh no Woo! oh i love this bike <laughs> i love the suspension anyways this is a pretty pretty good looking deal for me so far obviously woo, not gonna be the ideal shape for off-road but i mean how can you beat this much this much power the availability to stick two batteries in it, be able to fold it up, stick it in the car, and then go ride trails like this. I mean, I guess if that's not what you're into, maybe this isn't so great, but man, I mean, this thing, it just seems like they're packing a lot into this. I mean, honestly, I don't think there's anything that I'm too disappointed about. Whoa! Let's try and find something. We'll go power assist, pedal assist three. Kicks on fast enough in the woods. Feels like a pretty good pace. Not doing much. We'll try out the whoa shifter here in third. Feels like I'm definitely putting some power down. Whoa, don't really like doing this on the ice. I mean, can also now tell that I'm overdressed. And if you guys are interested, whoa, in the gear that I'm wearing, most of it's not mountain bike specific stuff, but I've got waterproof DC boots on. Then I've got a pair of armored Scorpion motorcycle pants that are kevlar lined with the msr knee pads armored flannel up top with kevlar and ce armor in it a swanky line sweatshirt and a uh, uh msr top base layer and bottom and yeah i think i'm going to continue on the throttle here because i'm getting a little sweaty pedaling so you can definitely get out here and stay warm with the right gear it's 37 degrees today i believe shift this back down i've never used one of these shifters before the eight speed i've only had sixes and sevens but i definitely like the the click style Woo! like they've got on this one man this thing crawls through this stuff good and, and i guess that to, to kind of answer my uh, initial question anyways if i can assume that if this thing oh no <laughs> just as i started to say it does this well oh we lost it might as well try that again Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> There's a good demonstration of how the dual crown fork that still gives you lots of turning 
abilities uh, is definitely nice. There we go. That would have been a good one to have 364. I can't believe that worked out. <laughs> yeah, this is going to be a tight turn to do this on. Oh, no. Oh, put that power down. Pedal in. There we go. So the suspension, I did not touch the front or the rear. And I guess obviously we're in the snow, so that can kind of help smooth things out a tad. But I've got to say, this feels really, really, really pretty good front and back. Handlebars, or hand grips, I guess I should say, are all right. Full leather, even if they are lock-on, isn't the best. Uh, probably should have turned them up a little bit to give myself a little bit more support. But man, it seems like they put together a really pretty nice bike here. This thing, this thing is fun. Whoa. Pedaling, pedaling, pedaling. Oh, this is getting deep, isn't it? <laughs> oh, pedaling, pedaling. Pedaling and throttle. Can we make it? Whoa! I think that was bear poop. <laughs> yeah, I do feel like I'm gonna lose the front a little bit when I get a, get really clipping like that and kind of try to flick it. But obviously that's, whoa! Mostly due to the snow, I would assume. Maybe partially the geometry a little bit. Throttle seems to be carrying us up those hills pretty easily. We gotta go find my big one and see if we can make it up that. Whoa! How about even this one? Oh, come on, bike! You can do it! Woo. Yeah, so I can definitely tell sitting down is kind of making my back not feel the greatest. Standing up really, really puts you in a, a very nice spot. Whoa! Comfortability-wise and control-wise. What are we doing as far as battery? 94. Whoa! Uh-oh. <laughs> Looks like we got the fenders. Whoa! <laughs> it was down on my side there. Ugh. Yeah, my hands are hurting a bit, and I think that's partially because the grips are a little bit slippery. All right, let's do my big hill here. Uh, but I, I think possibly a, a different style grip on here I think could be helpful in making them a little bit more comfy for this type of riding. Oh, there's not going to be any... <laughs> Any tracks here at all? Oh no, we're gonna lose it before we even get to the hill. Well, I don't really think that that's a fair battle. Yeah, that having that front like that, ooh, light like that is super nice. Just pick it up and throw it around. So that's why I didn't lose it before when I did my <laughs> hero move. Whoa, that was ice. <laughs> oh boy. Oh yeah, almost cleared it. Oh, case the back half though. <laughs> Oh, I would not have thought that this would be the one of the funnest bikes to jump, but boy is it. I don't know what exactly that suspension's all doing back there or how that makes it work out so nice, but boy does it. And the front just out of the box too, man. I, I have not felt that thing bottom at all. So I don't know if you guys uh, caught it at all, but a couple times there, I, uh, or at least once anyways, I, I mashed the, the front and the rear brake and woo. Obviously in snow and ice, you really, really should only be using the rear in gingerly, but uh, because of the traction of the tires and the, the control that the levers give you, I'm still upright. Yeah, I mean that front, that front and that front tire actually work pretty good out here. Uh, not that I'm saying go smash the front, front brake on the snow and ice, definitely don't do that. It's a good way to end up on your face. Probably the fastest way to end up on your face, but I've got to say I'm pretty impressed with the performance and control of the brake so far. No idea where I am. Uh, good time to take a little drink though. The MSR 
hydration pack as always definitely glad to have it if you guys are ever out and feeling a little dehydrated and not not feeling like riding much anymore a hydration pack on your back is definitely a good way to keep yourself out on the trail for a little bit longer definitely like that there is plenty of space between the brake levers and the handlebars so i can use them with just a couple fingers and i'm not smashing the rest of my fingers gives you a little bit of extra control and you can be ready to grab to kill the, the motor which either the front or rear will do average speed of 10 miles an hour that's not bad for in the woods total distance four miles and 92 percent power and we will leave this on zero take off whoa okay well take off is maybe a strong word try to take off in first gear on the shimano cassette and we'll see what whoa this thing's been doing to help me this whole time oh boy quite a bit whoa it's it's pedalable but to be honest i think especially with the snow here if i had to oh pedal or push this thing out i think i would choose to push let's try it in sport mode see what that does i don't know that it's really any faster of a takeoff oh well, maybe it is a little snappier i haven't been watching the power output mostly because i'm watching out for ice whoa pretty steady at 14 something 13 12. i think it's going to go back down to normal on its own after a few minutes i believe let's see wow that's quite the jump <laughs> Ooh, that wasn't so bad either boy those rocks just get soaked up by this thing i guess maybe being a little bit higher priced and being a little heavier built maybe that is just what they were going for and i think they certainly have achieved it whoa big flames shooting up there what is that burning off fumes from all the, the buried garbage whoa Ah! Oh, there it is. Huh. Oh! <laughs> oh, there we go. Kicked it back down to normal, which is just kind of a power saving measure. There's some rocks. Oh, actually, you know what? <laughs> I keep praising the suspension. Uh oh, uh oh. A, uh, a small portion of the reason that this thing might be cushy is just because I've got the tires aired down. But man, I gotta say, I'm I'm not disappointed. A few issues with the fenders, I guess, but other than that, man, I had a fun time on this. Give my hands a break. I would I would definitely put some more miles on this thing. What speaking of that, how many do we got on right now? So five miles off road, not too bad on terrain that's that nasty. Well, where is everybody else? It's a beautiful day for a bicycle ride. Oh, there's somebody else. Oh. <laughs> We stuck. <laughs> okay, that was a little too much. <laughs> now the real test is gonna be, can I fold this back up and get it in there after five miles of hard riding? Ow, oh, dang it. I got dump ice in my boot. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, yeah, that's that's a little heavy. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Oh. <sighs> yeah, it's not the the most compact folding bicycle, but heck, sure couldn't do that with any of the other bikes that I've got. I think I'm gonna like this thing. I guess I already do. So for final thoughts on the X24, of course, this is not going to be the best handling, the fastest, the most powerful e-bike out there, but it does have some really neat, well thought out features. The suspension is definitely up to the task of riding off-road, although maybe it's not exactly performance tuned. Having the ability to split this in half is definitely nice, but of course you end up with some sort of lackluster, weird geometry and handling, but like you saw, it can definitely be still ridden as is. I think it's got some really neat features like the light sensing headlight and taillight. I think the light sensor is actually right there, not in the headlight itself. Uh, the other thing that I really like about this bike compared to a lot of other ones that I've tested is that it's got a really nice place 
to grab on the seat. So if you need to pick this up to move it around, it makes that much easier. Obviously, it's not the lightest bike being over 80 pounds, but because most of the weight is in the back and down low, it really is pretty easy to move around in the woods. So of course, as always, I'm not trying to sell you anything. I could care less if you pick one of these up, but if this has sparked your interest, there will be a link down below that will help the channel make more videos like this. There'll also be any sort of discount code that I can offer you. I do really appreciate it when you guys use those. Like I said, I don't wanna try to sell you anything, but if you're already in the market, it does help the channel out a lot. It's honestly the only thing that allows me to keep doing this. So I do appreciate it when you guys take the time to use those. If you guys have any other comments or questions, let me know down below and I'll try and get back to you. Thanks for watching. Take care, stay safe, stay swanky. Get out, enjoy this beautiful world any chance you get. And if you're looking at buying an e-bike and you've never ridden one, they were a good time. I, I really, really enjoyed it. As much as I love my motorcycles, these were a good time too. So they're worth checking out. If you don't like this one, I've got lots of other reviews to check out. So till next time, take care.